can't even find the record button. There we are. I think we got it. Is it on? Well, anyway, I've got a picture of a pangolin up here, several of them. Wow. I just thought that was probably a Disney conception. No, that's probably that's probably a mixed breed. No, pangolins are, are real. I think they're supposed to be like possum lizard looking things. That's oh, what I'm yeah. It, it, well, if, if you could see, I've got some on here. And the only thing I can say that it looks like is a cross between an aardvark and um, what's that other thing we see on the roads here? Starts at A. Armadillos. Armadillo and an aardvark. Uh, right. Do you find those in Tennessee? You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe that's why you always got the, had seven tornadoes touching down over here to clean this place up. To clean it up. Well, oh. well, actually, I'm not sure what if what armadillos are native to. I thought that yeah, Mexico. we do have armadillos up here. Yeah, they've come up there. In fact, last time we were at Hohenwald, I saw armadillos up there, and it just blew my mind because, you know, just recently they had migrated up here to Florida, and we're seeing more and more of them here. And wow. people can eat that, too. And they Ugh. do. Ugh. Well, you know, that you know people starting to try to bring alligators up here, but that's not working out at all. Oh, I imagine not. I imagine hey, uh, quick question, Jackson, not to change the subject, sure. but well, here it goes. Um, have you read um, Hypostasis and the Ar Archons, or yeah. the Reality of the Rulers? What, what was your take on that? Well, it's been a long time. It was very hard to understand, unless you've got the whole Gnostic idea down. I think that's Sethian Gnosticism, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. which we really don't have a good handle on that but uh what do you think about it i i have not i've just read an abstract about it i just actually downloaded it onto my uh mm -hmm. reader app to to listen to the next time i drive um which by the way um just another side note i know you like to um um get text into pdf format like books into pdf format that app will do it for you if you can find any copy digital copy mm -hmm. even if it's like uh jpegs or whatever it will turn it into written text. uh if you get the full-blown version of adobe acrobat it will do it too it does that too sometimes it doesn't work out so good with the formatting but yes yes indeed that's what i've been doing i have a collection of uh, thousands of PDFs, especially on Qumran and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And today, when I was looking at one, I thought, I'm not even interested in this anymore. Right. What am I going to do with all this stuff? Yeah, anyway. so I have not read, but I just, um, I, I'm following, there's a guy on Twitter who has a YouTube account, and his name is, let me see here, his name is, he's, you would love him. Uh, he's an interesting, uh, interesting follow. Robert Sep, uh, S E P E H R at Robert S E P E H R. Sefer? Sepa, yeah, I don't know how you say it. That's, but like, he, that's a Hebrew name. He has, he has some uh, videos on YouTube that are just interesting about um, king genealogies and the myths that come out of Atlantis and, and, and it's all, I mean, he just puts down facts. There's no, there's no speculation there. Speculation on his part. He just says, this is what we have recorded. This is what they believe. This is why they did this. I mean, it's just really interesting stuff. Well, if you get a chance to put together an email or something and send it to me. And in the meantime, I want to reread hypostasis. And maybe we could talk about that because it's, yeah. to me, I just remember the last, I read it several times and it was one of the ones I thought, well, I can redo this, but nobody in the world's going to understand this anyway. Right. Except maybe you, you might be able to. No, I hope I can't. If I understand it too much, then yeah, well, and that's not good. Into the new age movement. So <laughs> probably nice. get into it. <laughs> nice. What is this? What are we at a, on a political debate stage here? You throwing, it's, it's you throwing be, mud at me? You slinging mud? Yeah, well, this is part of our, <laughs> our humor by insulting people here. That's, that's what we do now.
Yes, that's uh, the American way of humor is mm -hmm. complete insult. Rich, if you're going to stick around, jump in anytime. This is going to be a pretty much open forum. We've got two guests today. One, of course, is Mark Heston, the uh, Detox Whisperer. And the other is Jesse Snyder, my nephew, who's a scientist and also grew up in China. So we'll get a little talk from him when he comes on. Right now, he's got the baby. So he's got to wait till the wifey gets back to take that baby. He said about 10 minutes. And we're going to interview Bishop Daniel Regesh. You can be part of this regarding the political ramifications. He did a sermon on the politics of COVID uh, a couple weeks ago. It was fantastic sermon. Really, really good. Lots of YouTube hits. And while I'm on that subject, look, we're going on this forum toward the 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're getting within uh, range of being able to get that, which means if we get the 1,000 subscribers, we can take off. We're something less than 300 needed now. So if you're on here and you haven't subscribed yet, I can give you a link that you can just go there and click the button. You don't even have to listen to anything. I'm going to put that link on right now. If we hit that thousand mark, no telling what we could do. That's kind of the entry level for monetizing and getting some of the true benefits out of YouTube that one can get. So here we go in the chat, and I'll just give you it as well uh, in the recording here. So. Whoever listens to this can do it too. It's very easy. www.youtube1.org. That's all it takes. Go there. A button will pop up. Click the button, and you're done. Then you can go put on your mask, whatever you want to do. Uh, very nice to see you all here today. Again, we've got Jesse. Mark Heston, and Bishop Ragesh. Rich Cook here, if he's going to stick around. I th oh, here, he's still here. That's very good. And we're, we're glad to see him back as well. The rest of you, most of you are pretty much here most of the time. And I suspect we'll get a word or two from Norman. If uh, It'll be probably a negative word, but that's all right. That's what we have Norman here for, and that's why he gets paid. So let's start out. I want to ask, um, start with Mark Heston, since you're here. I think you're here, right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. You have Good morning. Shabbat shalom. And to you, sir. Thank you. And to the rest of you. Amen. What's Great. your general yeah. perceptions right now of where we are on COVID-19? Can you give us a brief rundown? Well... You know, I, I'm a subscriber of Epoch Times, and uh, I've been catching up. I've had several of the newspapers that have been piling up I haven't been able to get to, but just recently, this past couple of days, I've been pouring over them, catching up a little bit. i got to tell you, um, I'm anticipating, you know, I've, many of you who've been following some of the information regarding COVID, depending on your sources, hopefully you're using multiple sources because there's safety in that because of all the confusion. Um, but, uh, you know, they say that the uh, this supposed second wave of the COVID-19 that could very well come around next winter is supposed to be uh, a much more contagious, potentially more lethal, uh, because it'll be multiple generations beyond the initial um, and so I've been seeing the rumblings in the political scene uh, down in California of a coming medical martial law. And you guys are probably aware that, you know, if there's any kind of martial law that's going to have success and um, acceptability by the populace, it's going to be a medical martial law. Well, I'm seeing medical that. Medical martial law? Oh, you haven't heard that, huh? No. Yeah. Uh, because of the safety of yourself, your family, and your neighbors, and society in general, people are going to be much more inclined to follow what the authorities tell them to do. 
Uh, and so to the extent that we've got socialistic slash communistic uh, elements that are going to be coming in, um, and California, I don't know what you guys know about California, but uh, Governor Newsom, he's just bought and paid by the Chinese, the CCP. Oh. Um, and I don't know, and, and the CalPERS, which is the retirement fund for all California employees, mm -hmm. um, is owned and operated by the Chinese. And the guy who is the CEO of CalPERS is a Chinaman. So, you know, just like, what? Anyway, so expect um, major changes to initially likely come, you know, come into California first, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, and uh, so, like, our, our present situation, my wife is taking care of a, uh, a, a mentally handicapped gal. And so it's probably going to come down probably sometime 2021 that in order for her to uh, get coverage by the state, she's either going to have to show proof of having had COVID-19 uh, and having immunity, supposedly, mm -hmm. um, or have the vaccine. And the same thing with any uh, healthcare workers. So uh, this is incredible. So in order for healthcare workers to work in a hospital, they're going to have to be vaccinated um, in order for you to conduct business. Now, this is this is just a theory at this point, mm -hmm. whether this comes in 2021 or sometime past that point. But in order to conduct business, um, you're going to have to be able to show that you've had a vaccine or have some record that a medical doctor says that you had COVID-19, which would then theoretically, according to them, uh, you know, because of these theories about COVID-19, whether it's really out there, uh, the way they're saying it, um, you know, you'd have lifelong immunity. Uh, so anyway, so, and of course, we're going to a digital economy, so it's going to be really easy for them to control any kind of buy and sell uh, with, with this thing. So I don't know, I'm just, I'm a little um, concerned about that, but we know that our Heavenly Father um, has an out for us. He has a means of protection for us. He is going to, you know, I'm reading in Revelation 12, but we know that, um, and I, I understand and recognize your your interest in Revelation, Jackson, sure. uh, you know, regarding uh, previous uh, uh, fulfillment well, on that, which is very interesting, Revelation by the way. Revelation 12 can be interpreted, I think, probably better than any other chapter as being a contemporary situation. Okay. Well, you know, it's kind of intriguing your thoughts on that. Um, so I, I had spent a little bit of time this week going over Matthew 24, and uh, I just thought maybe I'd share a few things on that when as the time comes. Okay. Uh -huh. We're, we're going to let this go on longer today, I, I think, so we should have plenty of time for that. Uh, I'm wondering, though, about it sounds almost like it would be an advantage to people, especially medical people, to get the virus and recover by yes. 2021. I agree with that. And you know, get this in, no you know, hmm? yeah, so, you know, there's, there's certain political individuals, Washington, D.C., even in various states, uh, that has gone on local news and otherwise that say, you know, hey, so-and-so has gotten COVID-19 and they recovered. Oh, what's that? Are they looking, are they getting, okay, do, do, doc, you know, they go into the doctor's office, gee, doc, I've had a temperature and a dry cough. Can you write me a little script? Yeah. That I, you know, right? That's all you, that's all they need, right? You got a temperature, you got a dry cough. Okay, COVID-19, there you go. Right? And so whether they give them uh, hypo, what was it, hypochlordane? Mm -hmm. No, what, what is that stuff? Close Hypochloride. Enough. Yeah, anyway, um, or whatever it might be. And I guess that uh, that particular drug has saved several people from what I've been understanding. Um, and uh, anyway, I just find it interesting that these political people uh, have had COVID-19. They've taken the drug. Uh, now they got their little card, so they don't have to get a vaccine. 
And so it's probably time for us to consider whether we should be doing some of the same thing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I saw a very emotional interview with a woman that had recovered from it who was now giving plasma in order to make some antibodies for other people to be injected with. That really? is scary. As you, <laughs> I'm thinking that, well, what if this doesn't work out like they think and they take these antibodies out of people and inject other people and the thing happens to still be alive and mutates? Oh. Uh. Well, you know, now that's interesting because now they might get antibodies if you get a plasma tra um, transfer. Uh, they may get the antibodies, but the, the cell's ability to replicate those antibodies, I don't think that ability is going to be there. So it's not a it's not going to be a lifelong thing if you get a plasma transfusion. I don't I don't think it certainly sounds conspiratorial and political. What do you think, Daniel, uh, about politically, especially hearing that kind of news? Well, I've been uh, observing um, this stuff politically uh, almost since day one. Uh, you know, you I, I observed the briefings uh, and I also observed the media. And politically, what I see happening is two things. One of the things that I, if you go back to my sermon, I talked about praying that the Democratic leadership, the Democratic Party, did not do something to cause this to happen. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is they would get a facilitator and um, they would facilitate that with China. And they're starting to talk about that. If you look at Laura Ingram's show, Laura Ingram let it slip one night. And I caught it where a virus may have been injected into the system that would cause people to get sick. But I think it was strong this time. The goal is to do two things. To get, to get the economy to crash. Remember, this is election time. Mm -hmm. um, President Trump, but for this, has done everything right. He's improved our standing mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. He brought our economy back from a disaster. Uh, he uh, did some things in the African-American community with our, uh, Opportunity Zones and um, getting the work level. There were, more people, there were more people working now than it's ever been working before. And the Democratic leadership needed something to happen. As a matter of fact, I can take you to clips where it can show CNN reporters, MSDNC reporters saying that we needed a recession to defeat Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. They were literally trying to talk this country mm -hmm. into recession. That did not happen. So the possibility is that they did something, and my prayer has been, if they did something, that Yahweh would expose that and the individuals, including the facilitators, will be cross prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law up to and including being executed for yes. treason. Well, and, you know, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I'm not joking about that because to date, 50,000 people are dead. The Jewish leadership has suffered enormously and it's starting to infect now the church community. In Italy, 85 plus one bishop, members of the clergy died. And I'm getting news now um, that here in America that longtime members of the Church of God in Christ uh, that were on the uh, general board, and there's a whole list of them, bishops, pastors, overseers, gone. Bishop Wells, gone. 
I knew Bishop Wells when I, when I was a child. Gone. Just like that from this. Okay? We used yeah. to joke about him, and we used to say, boy, how long you going to be sitting on the general board? You've been on the general board since I was a child. Well, he's no longer there anymore because he died a month ago. Well, you're saying that that's typical of most churches, right? Especially the larger denominations. Yes, that you're starting to see it affect leadership and late personnel. And so President Trump, is his desire is to do the right thing. But you have this election year, electioneering that's going on. And I've said it, I've said it, if you go back to that sermon, I keep pointing back to that sermon. I said that when we start to come into midway point or when we start to clear, you're going to start to see the Democratic Party accuse the President of the United States of murdering 50,000 people. And mm. that's exactly what's happening through take, their surrogate. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Take a look at this uh, uh, debacle here in Trump's interview here recently where these uh, commentators jump on the idea that he is uh, purported to recommend that you inject yourself with Lysol. Exactly. And I, mean, that's I heard that true. quote. I mean, it, Anybody that would interpret it that way, it's, it's got to be a, a matter well, of manipulation because right, that's exactly not what he said. And because uh, I listened to the briefing, like I said, I'm, I listen to the briefings faithfully every day, and that is not what he said. But what is going on here? Keep this in mind. Our parents' generation, because I basically have been telling you guys that what the Democrats need to happen is to force this country into a depression. That's their goal, and people need to get it. I was listening to Sleepy Joe the other day, and in his way, his senile way, he was trying to say exactly what I've been talking about. What they want to do is to cause this nation to go into a depression. Then, just like in 1933, they're gonna come back and offer you a green, New Deal. Mm. A Green New Deal, just like what Roosevelt did. It's the exact same thing. So it's starting to lend. At first, when it started, I'm like, Father, I pray that I'm wrong. I pray that I'm wrong. I pray that every night. But what is happening is it's starting to prove that I'm right about what's happening. That they, through a facilitator, did something. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're, they're trying to get this country to go into a depression. That's why they're fighting the opening back up. You see what the, how they've been treating Brian Kemp down there in Georgia? Yeah. That's part of this. The you governor? see what they're doing? Yes. You see what they're doing in Michigan? You see what they're doing in Michigan? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You see what they're doing in California? When this is all said and done, all of the red states are going to open up and a lot of the blue states are gonna stay shut up, stay shut down. That's what their goal is. They have told mayors, they have told city and county commissions that are democratic, you do like we tell you and you stay shut down because this is how we're gonna defeat Donald Trump. That's what this has always been about. And the thing that upsets me, and you're already starting to see the war drums in Tennessee and in Georgia, they just, they, they've been having protests in uh, on Indianapolis uh, and, and other places. And this is going to change things dramatically because what we should be singing, we should be singing the praises of America now. You know why? Because people are not buying it. When this first started, see, we thought that our young people were dumb they were naive and they were ignorant. But these people are starting to get it. Okay? There is such pressure from the enemy. I mean, yes, there is. As a matter of fact, when we, when we had the government shut down, do you know the Democrat? Because, see, I follow Marshall Blackburn here in Tennessee. Do you know the Democratic operatives would get on these sites and they would scream at the people, shut the government down? Shut the government down. So they shut the government down. The worst thing that we could have ever done is to shut our economy down. 
Now they want to keep it shut down to August. So when no, by the time November gets here, the country will not have had an opportunity to recover. This is all about the election. Nothing else. Be. Look at, our, they, look at our county here in St. Lucie County, Florida. We have mm -hmm. quite a diversity of people here. We had one death from mm -hmm. this, a 98-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. And so I see people going around in their coats and masks and goggles and all that right in the grocery nobody's close to each other i think that um as they say these people are like sheeple well i i think what they're using the uh and dr heston talked about that they're using the tactic of fear but at the same time people i mean like i said if you lived up here um you can already hear the war drums going in florida georgia and alabama and different places like that and by the way you guys down there in florida you got one hell of a governor because he's yeah. done everything right and tennessee they thought that tennessee was going to be a slaughterhouse but that kappa alpha has done everything right as a matter of fact they, the mayor of chattanooga who's a democrat they thought that they were going to keep tennessee shut down well they found out something really nasty this morning because what they did is they went to the county mayor and the governor said, you open Chattanooga back up. And so they're going to, so they're going to be opening this up and people are starting to get it. You're killing us. The thing is, is a stupid election, a dumb, stupid election worth the murder of 50 and 60,000 people? Absolutely not. It depends on what's at stake for whom. Well, see, the thing is, it's not worth all of that. And that's what we're going to find out. And I'm going to tell you something. This country, this nation is going to put some people to death. Because I truly believe now that they did something. I don't know who yet, but I have asked Yahweh to open my eyes, open the eyes of the people, and expose what was done. That goes and, back to something we talked about before, uh, conspiracy. I'm not much to believe in conspiracies, but if, me it, neither. if it smells like a hog, maybe it is a hog. And Absolutely. It seems like to me. And they're Mark, desperate. What do you think? Is it a conspiracy still? Is what, uh, well, what you know, what Bishop Daniel recommends here is a very, very strong and uh, diabolical conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Well, I think most of what Daniel is saying, I think most of that's uh, pretty in line with what I'm seeing. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, the Democrats and Republicans had pushed through that $2.2 .2 trillion package faster than anything. That was record time. I mean, they're definitely in cahoots on, I, 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 I don't know, when I saw that happen, I thought, what is that really about? Anyway, but, to get back to the, uh, the the stats regarding the deaths of this COVID-19, I got to tell you um, that that is a manipulated stat. Because um, if you look at the overall deaths of all people during the similar time frame, we're talking over this whole winter time into this early spring, um, the total deaths of all diseases are the same, which basically means that this hyped up number of COVID-19 we got people with heart disease, diabetes, cancer that are getting labeled with COVID-19, either as a primary yeah. diagnosis or a secondary diagnosis. That's what's going on. They're trying to increase the stat numbers so that they can work toward this mandatory vaccine. Well, we go right and, back to what I was saying with a 98-year-old woman who really exactly. knows what she died of. Now, what do, yeah, you think okay. the, um, what do you think the actual number is, Mark? If it's not 50,000, what do you think it is? I don't think I, it's far off from 50,000. I would say it's closer to the typical number of deaths that we get with the annual flu. I'd say it's closer to that because of the fact that all the major death, you know, the total death numbers are virtually the same. You're talking about- So you think about it's about 20 to 30,000, correct? Uh, we're, we're No, we're talking about maybe three to 4,000. Flu deaths mm. going down as COVID deaths uh, increase? So well, basically, okay, so 
Food you know, this, this whole thing, this whole thing about COVID and they're saying the squashing the curve and all that kind of stuff. My, my suspicion is based upon the, the true data is that they're manipulating that to tell us, oh, OK, well, it doesn't look quite so bad. And they're doing this because this was kind of a practice run. And they're, you know, they're anticipating next year. This is a lot. Like, like Dan, OK, like Daniel says, this, you know, this is an election year. And, and so, uh, you know, the Democrats want to get, uh, you know, I, I recognize the Democrats want to, you know, want to make Trump look, look bad. And, and I think there's certainly some ploys on that. But, but, um, but anyhow, we're going to see stuff coming down uh, next year. I, I just see that. But, Mark, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can you that if the deaths are about three, four thousand? Look, we're talking about, let's take the rabbinic Jewish leadership, for example. Uh -huh. They've lost a lot of leadership in this country, over, especially in the New York area. A lot of them. Um, uh, some of these other denominations, they've lost a lot of their people. We got bodies. I mean, those bodies uh -huh. probably would still be alive, some of them. And of course, now you now when you when you're looking at some of your news sources, you're not look. Are you getting? You're not getting that from CNN or something. No, like absolutely that. not. I don't even let CNN on in my house. I okay, well that's good to hear. <laughs> no, what I do is um, I listen to um, the denominations' information. Like for example, the Jewish leadership. I listen to Jewish radio, Jewish TV. Okay, that's in that area. Those people are there. They know who those okay. people are. They're having to fight with the NYPD when it comes to burials, okay? I also okay. know some of the Jewish leadership, so I talk to them, and I know this is happening. They're burying a lot of Jewish people. They're okay. burying well, a lot that's of African Americans, uh -huh. okay? What... They're burying a lot of Hispanics. <clears throat> hey, Mark, uh, Dr. Yeah. Heston, um, yeah. question, because you said that the flu numbers uh, for – in in an average year it would be three to four thousand, but I thought that I heard somewhere that it might have been like fifty or sixty thousand a year. During epidemics, it might be close to that. You know, that the last time something like that happened was nineteen eighteen, right? The Spanish flu. They say anywhere from fifty was it thirty to fifty million was worldwide. Um, and uh, was it the, the total number of deaths in World War One of soldiers? was 16 million, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, in fact, I, I was going to share a couple of things about the um, uh, flu epidemic histories over the course of centuries. I could, maybe I could share that with you guys now. Uh, let, me, let me pull up my yeah, little... Please. Uh, please. There is a study I read about the Black Death and how it spread across Europe. There's a Victor... Uh, uh, a uh, Nor Norwegian professor who has charted out very well. You can ver tell very precisely when it arrives on in what country and where it came from. It's pretty uh, the interesting Black stuff. Death. Mm -hmm. The Black and Death the, you're talking about? Well, they yeah, say that originated in China too. Actually. What started in Ku uh, Ku uh, Cafe, an area they called that, yeah, which was a trade city, and it was uh, you know, that and there was uh and kind of involved with the first use of biological warfare um, where bodies, dead bodies were slung across a wall on a catapult. And then these Ooh. people, um, they got on a ship. I think it was the Genoans. Mm -hmm. uh, they got on a ship and took it back to Europe. And well, of course, you know, kind of the rest is history. Really? They took all these dead bodies to, to where? And no, 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 no. Not the dead bodies. Oh. The fact is they contracted the, 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 the plague, Black, uh -huh. and uh, they carried it with them because it was on rats and you know oh, ship right. rats and stuff right. like that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. so that's how they spread it. It, it would you know Gen uh, Genoa uh, spread around Italy. You know, it came into England even. Uh, but the guy that the uh, professor I'm talking about, he had a very precise um, map, basically of when, you know, where it came from, or how many ways it might have even entered the country or a particular country, you know, because uh, everything, a lot of things were done by ship. Mm -hmm. It was just it right, was cheaper, right. slightly cheaper to sail than to go overland. And it was a little less dangerous too. So, 
Well, that's interesting. That would be something worthy to investigate. A little Tell further. me again about uh, how they where they catapulted bodies out of a city. Over no, oh, a city. into it. They catapulted them into a city. I think it was. Uh, oh. Oh my gosh. And they use that as biological warfare. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh wow. Well, go ahead, now Mark. Tell us what you were going to. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well. I, Okay, what I'm going to share with you now, this is, and again, anything anybody shares, right, especially amongst this group of self-studiers, uh, this is worthy of further investigation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you guys have heard the term plandemic by now. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. Well, I was listening to uh, Joseph Mercola, Mercola.com, who was interviewing Brian Hoyer, who's a... Um, uh, entrepreneur of uh, oh, what was the name of his company, but he's he's basically sh helping people shielding of all different types of frequencies, including this coming 5G. Yeah. Anyway, he had presented some information that he had gotten from another fellow. Uh, if you've ever heard the name Art Furstenberg, um, he wrote the book called The Invisible Rainbow, uh, and he brought out in that book and I'm going to give you most of the information that I'm about to share with you regarding these patterns with flu epidemics is from his book. Now I've embellished it a little bit from my own research. I've added a few other things, but basically I'm going to kind of give you a list. So you, at least you get an appreciation of a pattern here. So <clears throat> in, in 1646 to 1715, that's about, about uh, um, 70 years, almost no sunspot activities. Now what I'm about to share with you is an EMF uh, impact or lack thereof and how that affects flu epidemics. Isn't that a, an 11 year cycle? Yes, so the sunspot activity, yeah, the sunspot activity is typically on the average about 11 years. But for, for whatever reason, and I guess they're able to determine this uh, uh, astrologically, but they found that there was basically no sunspot activity back in that time period. Again, 1646 to about 1715, for about 70 years, very long period, and it was, and it was called uh, by many climatologists the Little Ice Age, because obviously without those extra flares, um, you know, contributes to a colder environment. And that went on for 70 years, supposedly. And there's no influenza epidemics recorded at all during that time period. Now, what's interesting, uh, just a few years after that, there was an incredible amount of sunspot activity. It was in 1727. And the very next year was this massive, huge influenza epidemic. So the theory is, is that <clears throat> with the added flares, there is a tremendous EMF discharge that hits the earth, affects the human body with the coming colder season, uh, tends to create an issue within the body. I'm not sure exactly the mechanism, um, but the pattern is there. Anyway, so this EMF, <clears throat> what happens, essentially the body is creating, due to the EMF, um, there's a lot of toxins that are generated uh, with these um, EMFs, <clears throat> and it takes, uh, you know, we all have latent viruses within our bodies, and we all, well, you know, I was going to say we all know, we, maybe that's not true. <clears throat> Excuse me. What, what's been come no, uh, become known is that the DNA, of which there is a strand of that in every virus, you have, you have RNA and DNA viruses. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> those things are antennas. They send and receive signals. And so the little strand of DNA, whether it's a, um, uh, a free radical bombardment result from uh, the nucleus exposure of every cell to whatever, in this case, the EMF, causing a fracture um, and so we get these little viruses that are generated because of an EMF pulse um, 
and to, to the point where the body eventually is going to have developed flu symptoms in the in the uh, culmination of ridding the free radical generated problems in the body. So anyway, so just to put it in a short paragraph that way, uh, let, let me let me give you the rest of the patterns. It's actually very interesting. So in 1727, incredible increase of sunspot activity. The next year, 1728, an incredible uh, influenza ep epidemic. In, uh, in eight, by 1888, we had the wide use of telegraph wires across the country. We had street lights in the cities. Uh, the following year, 1889, influenza epidemic. And of course, we know about the Spanish flu thing, 18, I'm sorry, uh, 1918 and 1919. <clears throat> and we you know, had mentioned anywhere from 30 to 50 million died uh, worldwide. Um, in comparison, again, the World War I soldiers, the total death there was 16 million. Um, but what I find interesting in light of this um, is that uh, there was a flu vaccine given in Spain. This is how it became called the Spanish flu. Uh, the Allied soldiers were all given a vaccine in Spain during the course of the war. Mostly, you know, the Americans came in in 1917. <clears throat> and uh, what's another uh, twist to this is uh, is back in the states, all sugar was was. Uh, um, was withheld from the general public to be shipped to the soldiers for their energy, right? And, and we, today we know what sugar does to the immune system. So you give somebody a vaccine, you pump them full of sugar to give them energy out there on the front lines, what's gonna happen? You know, you, you consider the stress of being on the front lines too, right? So <clears throat> what's gonna happen? You got, you got guys that are sick, major sick, mm -hmm. and these guys eventually come back home. And then sugar comes back into the general uh, a diet again. And so you got a massive wave of this stuff. So I, 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 I didn't, they didn't mention, uh, I'm assuming that there was some kind of sunspot activity that they were talking about in 1918. I just added this other component regarding the vaccines and the sugar. But, and then the next one was 1956, very active sunspot activity, very unusual. And of course, 1957, we had this unusual, what they called unusual, Chinese flu epidemic. And remember, China, uh, you know, what is it? Just about in the middle of China is the uh, um, equator, if, if I think my geology is correct. You know, so they got a lot. I mean, they're closer to the sun. They're less uh, atmospheric uh, protection. And so they're going to get a major hit when that sunspot activity goes on. So I could see that developing in China, if indeed what we're talking about as an EMF pulse, you know, propagating this thing. But I, the pattern is very interesting. Then the next one, 1967, satellite deployment mm -hmm. uh, had become common amongst other countries, not just ours. We had been sending up several satellites in the years prior, but by 1967, several countries, France, Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, you know, had sent up uh, satellites. And uh, so 1967, that was going on. And the following winter, 68, 69, was the Hong Kong flu epidemic. You might have heard of that or remember that in history. Oh, yeah. And then in 1997, we've got cell phones and internet becoming more widely available. Wi-Fi became commercially available in 1997. Well, in 97, 98 was the big bird flu stuff. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in 2002, we had new cell phone technology hit the market. We have Nokia, a Blackberry had been around, but they had put, they had a new technology that year. Um, and how much that impacted that, it's kind of hard to say because now, you know, you know where I'm going now. We're talking about the SARS and the MERS that sure. happened in 0203. We, we, you know, we okay. We know the story about the wet markets and all that, and and I, and I'm not going to negate that. Uh, but what I will say is that our immune system is greatly um, impacted by these EMF uh, changes, right? 
Every time there's a change, you know, think about it. Our bodies, I'm going to share this with you. You know, the, 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 the composite DNA within our entire body. If you think about that, a bacteria has 10 times more DNA than the cells of our body. And consider the fact that there's 10 times more bacteria in our body than we have cells. Then what does that equate with, with the amount of DNA total in comparison to the total DNA of bacteria in our body? How much DNA total do we have in our cells? You mean one percent bacteria? One percent. Mm -hmm. So so most of the DNA deoxyribonucleic acid that is within our body is bacteria generated. Did you know that our immune system is tied at least 90% to the bacteria in our gut and in various port parts of our body, i.e. the spleen, uh, the nervous system, even that they've even determined now, believe it or not, that they have found natural or beneficial bacteria in our brains. So you can't say that our, you know, the urinary tract is completely sterile, that the brain does not have, you know, bacterial colonies. We can't really say that. So our bodies are just amazingly composed of this, you know, we, we are a walking colony, right? It's kind of amazing. Anyway, uh, to continue this EMF thing, so now coming back closer to our time period. So in 2009, uh, 3G is getting maxed out. 4G gets released in 2010, and we had the swine flu 2009-2010. I think it had greater virility 2010. Um, anyway, so there's a connection with the propagation of what you know, whether they're uh, engineering, which I think there is some of this. Um, you know, these viruses, uh, they're propagated by various forms of frequency. And I would, I, I would venture to say, with all this uh, biological warfare going on, they, they know what frequencies uh, turn on replication factors for viruses. They know all this stuff. You know, you inoculate somebody with a with, with, with a bug and then you zap them from miles away with something that's completely odorless, tasteless, yet you can't sense it. There's no way we could determine it unless you had some kind of specialized instrument. So, I mean, that's the, the, you, can you tell me of any other better way to affect and decimate a population? Well, here's the question that I would have. Why? Yeah, have why, huh? would they, why, why are we that important that they would waste their time and waste that their energy just outright killing people. Well, we know it doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. We know scripture talks about this stuff happening in the end times, right? Um, and that's a fair question. Do they do, do those to the deep staters, if you want to call them that, are they uh, looking for you know sheeple? Uh, in their, you know, the, we know that the university systems for decades, for gener generations now, have been basically brainwashing. You know, we, we've got what two generations now of brainwashed students, and so, and what does that equate to? Look at look at all the people. You know, the, the and millennials. You know why that happened? That happened because men who are um, of uh, faith, men who are renowned, mm. they walked out and they left the system to the liberals. Yeah. Same thing with the public schools. Well, yeah, it's because it was illegal for them to complain. It was illegal to use the pulpit as a political right. uh, gambit or whatever you want to call it, you know. Uh, and so, you know, so they were sheepalized. Even the pastors were sheepalized with the 501c3 and all this. Any, anyway, but um, now Jesse, I'd, li I'd like to have Jesse come in and share some stuff in light of this because now he studied um this is i guess that jackson, uh, jackson that's your nephew you said yes is he there he's not here yet he's, oh, he's still not. up right now so oh, but, oh, oh, oh. But when he gets here we'll hold to that i want i wanted yeah. to bring something in here because you did it 
you moved into an area of a uh, great conspiracy that has been denied by the public and scientists and everybody else, and that is the relationship between disease and microwave, uh, mm -hmm. COVID 5G right. technology. Okay, and so on that point, if I may, Jackson, can yeah, I can sure. I make a comment? Okay. So, with, of course, you guys know about the 5G, the fact that that was turned on in November in Wuhan in China, right? Yeah. And, and so was that the trigger that turned on the virus from the, vet, from the, from the uh, experimental vaccines that they were playing with over there in Wuhan? Was it, was it the what trigger? What you just said, then, a, a greater possibility that it is. Than, uh, that I, 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 well, I, I hold it out as, as, a, as, as a viable theory. At this point, um, you know, because now there's some doctors who are who are talking about this. Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, MD. Yeah. Rob, you, you know who he is. OK, sure. some of you guys do. Uh, from you. Oh, did I? OK. So. And Mercola is on board with the same thing. Most of you guys probably know Mercola. Uh, anyway, there's there's cutting edge MDs who are more alternative minded, who are coming around to some of this. Even Mike Adams, the health ranger, is finally recognized and has admitted that there is a connection with this 5G and the COVID thing, um, which I was happy to hear. Uh, oh, so my point on the 5G. So, you know, I, I, I can't help but think of that verse in the scripture. It says, the prince and the power of the air. That is an incredible statement. Mm -hmm. because this 5G, which is the fifth generation, we're talking 60 gigahertz frequency, which is within, which, which is very close to within that microwave frequency realm. It turns out, <clears throat> according, and I've heard this from at least two sources now, so that gives a little bit of viability what I'm about to share with you, and maybe some of you guys have heard this, <clears throat> is that with that frequency, it affects the oxygen molecule. When I say molecule, I'm talking about two atoms of oxygen. On the outside of that molecule, there are two free electrons that are looking for pairing. Yes. In the presence of that frequency, those electrons spin so incredibly fast that when you breathe it in, the natural EMF, we're talking about, you know, a, a micron EMFs within the body, uh, the red blood cells in our body have a little iron core. All of us know that iron is iron? magnetic. Yeah, iron? we have we have hemoglobin is an is an iron core right. within the red blood cell, and it is that magnetic property of that iron core of the red blood cell that allows our body to suck and to pull the oxygen into the red blood cell to carry it to all the tissues of the body. What happens with 5G, spinning those outer electrons of the oxygen molecule so fast that that electromagnetic property of the hemoglobin in the red blood cell cannot pick up the oxygen. And so this is why people are staggering like they're at high altitude and wind up dying from suffocation because they can't get the oxygen into their tissues. So, so I'm like, wow, what, what is a remedy for that? Um, now, it doesn't take very much to block 5G. Um, 5G does not work in the rain. Yeah, it's a really Five, short wave si uh, signal, isn't it? You have to have towers every place. Right, every street light is gonna have a, Right, to propagate that thing. Um, and all this idea of practicing social distancing. Oh, oh maybe I shouldn't go there. Uh, <laughs> go wherever you want. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because some of them now are claiming, oh, we're going to have to, we need social distancing even greater. Why are they doing that? I mean, the, if you watch the vapor trail of an exhalation, now granted, if somebody sneezes, it's different. But if you watch a vapor trail of somebody exhaling, you know, nowhere near. I mean, you've got six feet, is plenty of space. And now they're talking about wanting to expand that. Why are they wanting to do that? 
Well, is it because they can isolate people so that when they can pinpoint, you know, 5G can actually pinpoint it? Mm. Well, it's like, oh, my gosh. So if they determine based upon, uh, you know, how easy it is to profile somebody today, right, because of the Internet. Wouldn't it's take very much. science fiction. Yeah, I mean, this is like, I mean, this is Atlas Shrug, right? This is, we're in it. This is it. And so going back to what I had mentioned last Sunday, how the year 2020 is the first year of the seventh millennium, here we are, based upon the correction of the biblical chronology that we talked about. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm just kind of going on a little bit. Um, if, if there's anybody that wants to interject or have the floor based upon what I shared, I, you know, that's I fine. I do laugh to scorn for that theory. Laugh to scorn for years. About oh, for years. Millennium. Yes, for years, because the way I figured it, it came to 1996. Right, right. Based upon, based upon Usher's chronology. Right, yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. But who knows about that? But it's gone. All those chronologies are very close to each other, except the mm -hmm. radical ones, of course. You know, just to get people up to speed on what I shared last Sunday, just real briefly. So Usher's chronology, the 6,000 years from Adam's beginning, takes you to 1996, 1997. And, uh, but there was a correction in the Hebrew language that was done by a layperson, so he's not entitled to a you know, doctrine. So in other words, you know, all, the, all the denominations are controlled. So you know, if, if a layperson who studied the language for a period of time comes up with something, you, get, you know, it's time for us to listen. Well, anyway, this guy had found that, well, wait a minute, there's a 15 years difference. It's, 19, 19, it's not 1997. If you add 15 years to that, it comes out to 2012. Well, what's 2012? Everybody's heard about 2012, right? The Chinese had their astrological massive change for good fortune for their country. Look what's happening now. And, and the Aztecs in 2012, their calendar uh, said that there, was, there would be a transcendent change in the earth in 2012. Um, and then you look, and of course, our concern is not so much 6,000 years of Adam's uh, beginning as much as the 6,000 years of sin. So if we know how many years Adam was in the garden, now we just have to add that number of years to that, and we'll come up with 6,000 years of sin, right? Well, for those of us that have read the book of Jubilees, we know that Adam and Eve were in the garden for exactly seven years. <clears throat> so if we add seven to 2012, what do you get? 2019. The next year would be what? The first year of the seventh millennium. Here we are. And so when is the beginning of the year? Huh, vernal equinox. When did all the countries start shutting down this year? The vernal equinox. Wow. Oh, my yeah. So, so we're in it, guys. This is, we're, we're into the last days. So, uh, oh, and by the way, I got to share that, you know, Jackson, I listened to, uh, um, somebody had sent me a thing from uh, Eddie Chumney. And you said, you said you had Eddie Chumney uh, uh, speak for your group one time? Well, he didn't, it, it didn't work out, but oh. we are good friends of his. Okay, I, I like him. him. For years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's good. Well, hey, he shared something. That um, that you're very familiar with because you have a recording of it. You had done A. A. Allen's Empire State Building Vision about seven years ago, or no, five years ago. Um, anyway, I listened to a few of them. I'd say that yours was the best one I've heard. That's the best audio dramatization of that vision I've, I've heard. Very good, and you guys need to hear that. So check out Jackson Snyder's. Um, June 27, 2015, recording on A.A. A. Allen's Empire State Building Vision. That was from back in July 4th, 1954. If you guys know who A.A. A. Allen was, a uh, Pentecostal evangelist who did miraculous healings uh, from the 40s and 50s into the 60s. I'll put a link uh, on. Yeah, put, yeah, put a link on there. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, you listen to Jackson's uh, expanded uh, – well, I, I think that was the – Un, unabridged version of his vision, because I saw some of the shorter ones. Yes. Uh, very good. I, I recommend that you guys listen to that whole thing, because this is exactly what's coming down. Um, <clears throat> okay. 
So uh, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Uh -huh. If we're at the end of days, uh, what should the body be doing? Okay, oh, we man. know about all of the conspiracy theories. We know about all of that. <laughs> so what should the body be doing to be ready? Because uh, okay. to be frank with you, yeah. if Yahweh would have come today, you sure would have come today? He doesn't have nothing to work with. Oh, yeah. I he hear you. Well, okay. Work but, okay, I, I hear you, Daniel. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, there is a lot of preparation going on. We, we know that, um, you know, the Daniel, what is it, Daniel 12.4 has been going on for at least 10 years. Probably the seven year period that we're talking about from 2012, right? Uh, uh, more and more people are coming to the, to the Hebrew roots. Uh, just amazing. And this is because Daniel 12, four is basically, people are going to go about to and fro. What? Looking for information even, because he says, knowledge shall increase. And that word knowledge in Hebrew is da'at, which yes. in pictographic means the door that leads right. to the sign. In other words, basically knowledge of truth, as I see that. So when I look at Matthew 24, which is uh, Yeshua's uh, dissertation on the last days, starting in verse 14, when he says, you know, this gospel of the kingdom, what's this gospel? Is it the gospel of mainstream Christianity? No, it's the first. It's the social, no, it's no. The first I, I would say teaching. I would say the, the the gospel of mainstream Christianity is a preamble of what the true gospel is because it's 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 got static, right? It's not the true gospel. So yeah. so when he says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and that's going on right now. I mean, this true knowledge this is is starting to come out. That and, that's good. That's all well and good. I got you. Uh -huh. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, the knowledge is there, but what yeah. I'm saying is the body is not ready to do anything because while we have the knowledge, you couldn't put five people in a community together. I mean, well, yeah. how would, how how were they going to build anything? Yeah. At that yeah. Time? You no, you are you are you, you basically have hit the nail on the head because that that is our that is our problem. What you know, you, you get you get three messianics together. How many how many answers to a problem do you have? Right. Same thing with the Jews. Same thing with the messianics. Same thing's going on. Color right? me blue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so, you know, when I think of this gospel of the kingdom, I I think, man, you know, we we need to have the foundation right. But I think more and more people are coming coming to that. Well, let's go on to fifteen, verse fifteen of Matthew twenty four. He says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel. And that says the abomination of desolation that stands in the holy place. In other words, when you see that abomination actually in the holy place. It's already you got, there. Uh, okay. And now you remember that back in, in what is it, 66 AD, the three and a half years prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. What, yes. was, that what was that abomination of desolation? There did was, not did not Vespasian plant the Roman standard within the sixty feet of the outer of the exterior portion of the Jerusalem wall that was supposed to be sacred ground? It was Herod and Pilate. They all tried to do that, even yes. back as, as far as Caligula. Who was that guy to put the, the um, statue the emperor, inside then. the temple? Oh, okay. Oh, the statue inside the temple. Inside. But that was the guy who's trying to oh, okay. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so, well, that might take you to at least one. Okay, after the destruction of Jerusalem, well, I don't know. This may be something. I might be thinking of something else. But Bar Kokhba, uh, part of the reason why that gained so much momentum amongst the Jews, and that was not in Jerusalem. That was in uh, uh, Bither, the city of Bither somewhere in Judea, I think. Um and, and of course, you know, the, it was a two and a half year siege that was going on. Over 600,000 Jews lost their lives in that whole thing. But what, what it was about was not only was Bar Kokhba, uh, you know, fashioning himself as a Messiah, what he was doing is he was cleaning the city from, from the idols, the Roman idols that they had set up. And those idols were basically taking 
uh, uh, spiritual control of the people, but there was enough people that stood up. I mean, it was like an American revolution of sorts, actually. You know, we but think it of was it was too late though because the, the the abomination that made desolate was already set up. Yeah, it was already, it was already up. up there. It that's was already right. up there, and it's right. still up there now. Right, and that's a good point, which brings us to the next point of this verse. It says, "When hey, when you see that abomination set up, get the heck out of Dodge." Right? He says, because in the next verse, he says, let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. Now, if you actually analyze, now I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of liberty on the interpretation of the word Judah. If you look at Judah, it is Yah with a Vav, and we know a Vav ties things together. It's Yah, Vavd, to a Dalit hay. A Dalit hay in Hebrew means back and forth movement very quickly. Yah's tied to back and forth movement. So let them in Yah's uh, ability to movement move flee to the mountains. Now that's a that, it's just an interesting thing I saw because I like to look at things pictographically just to see what the well, if there's a foundational component to this thing. Anyway, that, that thing kind of came up. But, it, but the point being is that when you see that abomination of desolation, whatever it is, and, it's, and if it's standing in a holy place, get out of Dodge. So, but he also says, he says, leave immediately. You can take your bug out box, but don't be packing yourself and take all your stuff. Now that's, and, and woe to those who are pregnant. It's like, wow. I mean, you know, this is serious stuff. Now, the next verse, this is verse 20. Now, this is, you guys might appreciate this. Um, it says, but pray ye that your flight be not in winter. Now, that's a hint. That major stuff could very well come down in the winter time. Or, what does he say? So pray that your flight doesn't come in the winter, neither in the, now I'm going to add something here. That word Sabbath, right? Neither it's trans it's translated neither in the Sabbath day, but that's not what it actually means in the Greek. Shabbaton in there? Well, um, you know, I didn't actually analyze the actual form of the Sabbath, but that would be a good thing to do. Um, I should I should see that if that's Sabbaton. Um, but but it I, I believe it's sabbatical year. Okay? Because all it says is Sabbath. You guys know that in the Old Testament, when they talk about Sabbaths, it's within the context, whether we're talking about a Sabbath day or a Sabbath year. They never actually say day or year, but it's within the context of the series of verses or the passage that tells you whether they're talking about a day or a year. Okay? So this is, so I believe that this, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither in a sabbatical year, because in a sabbatical year, what are you supposed to have been done? You're supposed to have, put all your prepared food for the next three years in storage. Mm. Okay? Because if you read it in context, it's talking about days, plural. Okay. For then shall be great tribulation such as, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved but for the elect, uh, elect's sake, those, day, those days, plural, will be shortened, right? And so, and then, of course, um, let me see. Can I add something real quick? Yeah, 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 absolutely. The first time Jerusalem was surrounded was by Castius, not okay. Titus. And that was okay. in just before the winter of 66 AD, at the beginning of this whole cycle. Okay, Castius. So up until October, Castius had surrounded Jerusalem, and then uh, he went away, and that prophecy was concerned especially with a 66 AD event, because again, on the prophetic scale, that was in the height of the neuronic persecution, too. Oh, that's interesting, because now did Vespasian come in? Um... Vespasian. Oh, that, he came in at near Tabernacle's time of 66. Yeah, Vespasian never came in. 
Oh, he didn't. No, he he was uh, confirmed. Remember, he ended up becoming emperor. Right. So he, he never went in. Titus went in. No, 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 no. But okay, so that, the history that I've understood I is that Vespasian came in uh, near just before Tabernacles of '66 and surrounded. That was uh, Caspian. That. But that you're saying that's in the winter of '66. It was uh, up until October 23rd. That's right on the tip of winter. Pray and not be in the winter. You got to uh -huh. get out of there. Just the very uh -huh. instant that Castius left unsurrounded Jerusalem, you got to get out there now because Titus is on his way. And exactly. Titus destroyed. Uh, okay, because now, because the histories that I've read, and I've read a couple of sources, is that Vespasian had done that. And then it was in the interim by before, uh, what was it? I think it was the next year. Because Nero had died in 68, and then Vespasian became uh, the emperor. Mm -hmm. And then his son, Titus, became the head general. Yeah. But before uh, but, that, the whole thing broke out because Jerusalem was surrounded by another Roman general sent there by Nero before Vespasian, but he failed. He went away, and uh, jo Josephus said Castius could have had the whole city. He just went away, and then as he was going away, he was attacked by marauders, marauders all the way up to uh, uh, up to Caesarea, and the marauders killed his entire army. And that's when uh, Vespasian was sent, but Vespasian came to power before uh, the next surrounding of Jerusalem. So that's he had a yeah. right. short right. interim period there, and it was just be the, for the winter, you had to get out of there fast when it was unsurrounded. It was around Passover when they went in. You're right. That's you're right. That's, That's right. right in uh, 70 when Titus 70. Went. Right, right. Um, now, if we, let's see, Matthew 24, where is it? Um, and then, let's see, then Yeshua is talking about, uh, you know, you can look for the coming um, where is it? Uh, behold, I've told you before, in verse 25. Um, okay, it's talking about all these different Christs that are going to arise. False well, he Christ. says that this generation will not pass. Another place, this generation will live. This yeah. At all, you know, what generation? Everybody. That generation knows, on the ground. Except Benny, Benny Hinn doesn't know, but everyone else knows that a biblical <laughs> generation is 40 years. Exactly. Right, 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 right. So. So the coming of the, he mentions about the coming, the parousia of the Son of Man um, in verse 27, and then talks about carcasses where the vultures mm -hmm. are going to be gathered. But then in verse 29, now this, is, this one kind of struck me. Um, in verse 20, 29, our Savior says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. That means right after it, right? Okay. He says, immediately after those that tribulation, he says, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give off her light. Now, if you end, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, if we follow that whole thing, it says, if we take the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give her off her light. You know, if you take that phrase right there by itself, that is a solar eclipse. Because the sun's going to be darkened when the moon comes in front of it. And because the moon is in front of the sun, the moon is darkened. So I see that as a total solar eclipse. Now, what's interesting, you guys know about the solar eclipse. I, uh, Danny, you guys heard about it. Uh, I think it came close to you guys near Chattanooga there, too, in uh, 2017, August 21. Oh, yes, yeah, it actually came right over my house. Uh, okay. It happened, it happened right. right over my house. Okay. Okay. There was another um, one in '96 that was amazing. Uh, okay. Well, the neat thing about this one that we had just recently, uh, August 21, 2017, it went from the northwest Pacific coast to the southeast Atlantic coast. It basically bisected the whole entire continental U.S. Uh, and it turns out, because uh, I did a little bit of research on this, that there has not been any total solar eclipse that went through the entire continental U.S. not since 
uh, 1000 AD. Um, so, and, and what was interesting about this one, now the longest point of totality happened to be right in the center of that, just about in the center of that path, which was right about Carbondale, Illinois. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Carbondale in a minute. Um, and, that, and it was the two minutes and 40 seconds, the longest time period of totality through the course of that whole thing. And the, and the whole thing lasted about two hours and 43 minutes, right? Well, and you guys know what's coming, right? We have another total solar eclipse that's coming almost seven years from that date on April 8, 2024. Now, I find this very significant. That date for us as Enochian calendrical feast keepers, that date, this is before. Isn't that Tish Bav? What's that? Tish Bav, April 8th. The day well, I, that Jerusalem is destroyed every year. Uh, April, Tish, well, uh, okay. April April eighth is going to be before we we. No, it's okay. going to be during Passover, probably that year. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the Enochian calendar feast uh, pattern, uh, the the uh, um, Passover is actually before that date. But guess what? The Jews and all other Messianic believers are going to be doing Passover after that, which is kind of interesting oh yeah so about 12 days prior to this date is what i've calculated uh on the passover that we're going to keep uh prior to this solar eclipse and about 15 days after that is when the messianics are going to be doing uh their lunar uh, something passover. you got to remember about this is that these kind of dates wouldn't be according to the solar calendar because that is not the calendar uh of sin it would, these things would certainly happen in accordance with the Jewish calendar because that was uh -huh. the calendar yeah. was changed and that was one of the right. reasons that uh, Israel went astray. Right, that's right, that's right. Just my opinion on that. No, 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 absolutely. And so here we are. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of nickel knowledge now. So, uh, and you guys, some of you guys know about some of this coming total solar eclipse that's coming, 2004. Um, and this one is bisecting the path of the previous one at about the same location of Carbondale, which was the middle path of the first one. And this one's going basically from Mexico, coming up from Mexico through Texas, Arkansas, uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, Eastern Missouri and into that area of Southern Illinois, Carbondale. Um, and it's gonna arc I think, um, and it goes, uh, and then it's going to arc, and it, cu it curves over to uh, the northern, northern Maine, state of Maine, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland of Canada, um, and so its path is nearly half the speed. In other words, it's going to take twice as long, lasting almost four hours, and its coverage is going to be wider. So the moon is actually going to be in perigee. It's going to overshadow the sun even more than it did in 2017. And it's going to cross through Carbondale. So we have both paths where it intersects right at the Carbondale and Cairo, Illinois. Now, it's very interesting that the, the, the most southern tip of Illinois, the town there, the city, which is almost a ghost town today, because of economic problems. Uh, the, t the name of that most southern town in Illinois is called Cairo. Um, and the whole region from Carbondale to Cairo is called Little Egypt. It's called Little Egypt for several reasons. One of them, and I'm just gonna give you a, a couple of instances, was and there was a springtime exodus of, exodus of residents from northern Illinois because of an unusually harsh winter in 1830 to 1831. Uh, and they, they went, you, know, you think about, you know, the, the community of Chicago, even though it was kind of a, a new city, basically, um, in, in the north of Illinois. Uh, and uh, most of the residents made a trek south to southern Illinois to buy food. 
And so a lot of the people were joking about, you know, the Exodus, you know, because uh, I don't know if there's aridness about that area. I don't know. But what's interesting, the other point about how that area got the name Little Exodus is because the, the confluence of the rivers that meet at that point, especially in Cairo, Cairo, Illinois, is uh, you have the, uh, um, the, the Missouri River meets the Mississippi to the west right there, which we know those are huge rivers. And to the east is where the Ohio River meets a more southern uh, tributary called the Wabash. An incredible amount of water flows through that area. More river water flows to that area than any part of the country. And so they say that this is kind of like the tributaries of the Nile Delta. Uh, so anyway, so I think this is part of the reason why that area from Carbondale to Cairo, i.e., that's how it got its name, right, uh, called Little Egypt. And so the fact that these two pathways of solar eclipse crosses at that point, I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? Is this saying, and because it's crossing the entire United States with both passes, is, is Yahweh saying, because we know these are omens, right? Anytime you see a stellar sign like that, that the moon darkened, uh, sun doesn't give its light, stars fall. I mean, these are omens. Little Egypt? Are we saying that the United States is Egypt? Wow. I don't know. I, I just posed that for your... Um, and but both in that whole area is in 100% uh, uh, zone. 100%. Before I went, before I went to a, a kind of a preterist knowledge of this, I believed strongly that. So we spoke before Re Revelation 12 was about the Greater uh, British Commonwealth, particularly the United States, because that is to say the wilderness. Okay. Everybody was sent because you look in this country and all you see are Hebraic names of towns and cities and biblical stuff and and all, and all these people that had gone in the dispersion of Israel all over Europe all come over here. So um, I, I think that fits in exactly with what you're saying. You've got a little Egypt here. Mm -hmm. That doesn't surprise and, and, me any. Yep. Yeah. And of course, you know, the word Egypt in Hebrew is Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. You know what Mitzrayim means? It means it's the plural, right? It ends in I am. Mitzrayim. It's the plural form for painful trouble. It's like, oh my gosh, little painful trouble? Mm. Is it little time of trouble in the United States? Or you could say lesser because that little also... Yeah means a lesser trouble and sure maybe we need to go back to the prophetic viewpoint of all this mm, mm. but i think really anyway well, i because yeah i believe there's secondary applications and prophecies yeah. and stuff like that but um uh let's see i is jesse jesse in with us now or no i don't think so no okay next uh, week go ahead I put a piece of orange in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know whether you are able to continue this next week, but he got stuck with the baby. Can't yeah. leave the baby. His wife's disappeared. Can you come back next week? Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really wanted to hear his uh, assessment of China since he grew up there and course what he thinks about that as a chinese yeah. speaker and chinese native i would like to hear that yeah mm -hmm. but continue on we got a little more time well okay i got i just have a few more things i could share um sure. let me see now now this is this is from eddie chumby here uh this thing that uh that he taught let's see his talk this was uh what april 10th april 9th or 10th he talked somewhere um and he brought this little thing out. And again, this is, uh, uh, you know, another application for elements in the book of Revelation. He's looking at Revelation 6. Uh, and in verse 2, uh, when they open the first seal, we see that first horse is a white horse. In verse 2, it says, and I saw, behold, a white horse. Now, um, 
Well, let me read that whole verse. And, and behold, I saw a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, what, what Eddie brought out, which was interesting, he says the white horse is the symbol of the CFR, the Council on Foreign, Foreign Relations. Uh, and he that sat on him had a bow. A bow is a device used to send a projectile. And he says a crown, i.e. corona, is also a crown, right? The word corona is a crown. And a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, if you look at that term, conquering and to conquer, that uh, I, I did an analysis of the Greek, and it's, I'm not totally satisfied with this, but I kind of got the impression that it looks like we're going from one nation to the next. Conquering and to conquer. Is that word Nika? Uh, you know, I, I didn't Great. check. I don't recall that. Beat, like beating someone with a stick or beating someone in a game. Overcoming. Okay. Sometimes it's translated that. And, of course, okay. there's a name of a god there. God of war and battle is Nika. Oh. Same thing okay. you have on your tennis shoes. Right. Okay. Right. So, so he that sat on him uh, had a projectile. Uh, he was given a crown. Went forth to conquer. Now, you know. So he. So what Eddie was saying could this be uh, this corona projectile that is going around conquering from nation to nation? I thought it was an interesting spin on that verse but um oh, absolutely uh especially when you consider them catapulting dead bodies over the wall oh boy wow oh man hadn't thought about that part yeah that's right um you know and so i <clears throat> i went through <clears throat> excuse me those four horses and i couldn't help but recognize and i'm certainly open to people's input on this, but I couldn't help but recognize, boy, it looked like there was a feast pattern with these four horses. Because we know the first four horses are the first four seals of seven seals. <clears throat> and it looked like to me, now recognizing that when did the corona thing come into play? Was it not just before Passover? Mm. Right? Yeah. And so the white horse taking one nation to another, could this have been, you know, in preparation for Passover slash unleavened bread period? The red horse, we know, is referring to war. Could that be during the time of the counting of the Omer, whether it's this year or next year? Uh, the, the, the third seal or third horse is it was a black horse. And now, according to Eddie Chumney, he says with the selling of, what is it, one measure of wheat uh, for, for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, uh, he says that that refers to an economic collapse. Is the dis, uh, disproportionate uh, 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 exchange of well, of go stuff. to your no local grocery and see. There's not just not much there anymore. Oh, uh huh. So, so, so I think the black horse he says is relating to economic collapse. But what I find interesting, it says in that verse, it says, "Do not harm the oil, i.e., symbolically the spirit, and the wine, i.e., symbolically doctrine." But also it says, do not harm it because it hasn't been ripe yet. So if, if, if you have wheat and barley and the oil, i.e. olive and the grapes are not ready yet, we're talking about the time of Pentecost. So is the black horse the time of Pentecost for Yahweh's people and those that are not ready uh, and not doing his bidding going to be part of that economic collapse? Anyway, just something to think about. And then you have the pale horse, which is the fourth seal talking about death and hell, it's going to kill 25% of the earth by, the, by four means. It says the sword, hunger, death, which could be harmful animals. Oh, there's pestilence the in there. And, and then the, yeah, the beasts of the earth can relate to pestilence. The beasts of the soil can well, relate to these, Yeah, aren't these yeah. Uh, dangerous viruses and bacteria, wouldn't they be considered 
beasts, Therion, yeah, wild. You know, you could. I think you could. I think you could put that. Yeah. Especially if you're looking at the secondary form of the virus come yeah. next year, that could very well be. Uh, and so the pale horse could be the ninth of Og issue. Yeah, the ninth right? of Og. The yeah, that's of what I was talking about. Tishbaav. Oh, okay. That's uh -huh. the tish. That's right. Now I remember. Now that you say that, I made the connection. It just came to my mind. So that that could be the ninth of Ob time. Now the fifth seal is talking about the saints are crying out, "Hey, what about us?" Right. When, when, are, when are the dead supposed to be raised from the dead? Isn't that going to be around the Feast of Trumpets time? Sure. I, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. So that's the, the fifth seal could be the Feast of Trumpets. The sixth seal, I think, are the days of awe leading up to the Day of Atonement because it was, what is it, right after that, the 12 tribes are, are uh, uh, sealed, right? You got 12,000 from each tribe, uh, which I find very interesting. Dan is not part of that. Thank God. <laughs> uh, don't get me started on that. Uh, we know we know who Dan is, and we know what all judgment, not only in this country but every Western country, or probably all countries, uh, the whole ju judicial system across this world is, is BS. Well, isn't um, Don D A N? Isn't that uh, doesn't that mean judgment or judge? Well, that's what I mean. Dan, yeah, okay. Dan, Dan was the judge. And so Dan has no part in the 144,000. Right. That's what I'm saying. Not in there. And so, <clears throat> yeah, so um, all this supposed uh, jurisdiction and, and uh, law lawyers having their own language and, and all that, you know, anyway, uh, they're just decimating all the other tribes is what they're doing. So Dan is not part of the 144,000, thank God. Um, and let's see, then I just had a couple of little points to add to that. Because um, as you get into Revelation 7, uh, it talks about a great multitude. Um, the, it, it says great multitude, it doesn't say saints. Now, do you guys, are you guys aware of the word saint? I think I brought this out. Uh, maybe, probably a couple of years ago with your group. Um, the word saint in Greek, every time you see the word saint in the Hagioi. New Testament. What's that? Hagioi. Yeah, Hagios, right, Hagios. Um, th that word is, is anytime you see the word saint throughout the New Testament, it's always the same word in Greek. It's the Hagios word. Um, and it turns out that, that Hagios, Eos, refers to a person or a being. And so hog, what is hagios? It's, uh, hagios is, is a person who keeps hog. Yeah, he's a feast. Or, a feast, oh, oh, exactly. And, and even the Strong's Concordance, if you have an older Strong's, it'll tell you uh, that this word comes from, what is it, 2282 in the Hebrew. You flip back to the index in the Hebrew. It tells you 2282, that word is hog, which means solemn feast festival. And so by definition, a hagios, even in the Greek, is a feast keeper. So all the promises that are talked about in the New Testament, referring to the saints, are talking about the people that are keeping the feast. And we're not talking holidays. We're talking holy days. So when it says a great multitude, it doesn't say saints. But still, these are called an innumerable number of people from all nations and languages that are going to stand before the Father and His Son in spotless robes. These are those that are going to that have seen great tribulation as believers, even though they may not have had everything straight. They stood up for what they believed in to the point of death. Well, going uh, back so, to Hagios, um, Hagio is the uh, plural. You uh, transliter translate that. Back to Hebrew, we're talking of the Kadoshim. And yeah. in the Book of Enoch, uh, the Kadoshim are the ones that are very, that are in the end um, generally saved out of all that tribulation, but also it makes it very clear that they're feast keepers. Mm. That's cool. Well, I appreciate that, that uh, second, uh, second on that. Yeah, well... Uh, you know, you're, just, you're getting some confirmation on this. You got a new theory here. Is this yours? 
completely or you say Eddie's? Well, no, there was actually a guy who, who made the comment. I remember I went to a Tabernacles in 2012 and there was a guy that was teaching Hebrew. I'll never forget it. And uh, um, he, was, he was due to come up to speak and he was a great teacher. He was the one that really got me uh, interested in learning that language. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um, there was another speaker that was talking and I was coming back from the bathroom. I had this, this impending impression, Mark, get back there. There's something you need to hear now. Because there was people talking in the bathroom, right? <laughs> oh, I see. And so I said, uh, I'm going, guys. So I went, and as soon as I walked into that little auditorium there, the Hebrew teacher was, who was sitting amongst the audience was making a comment before the speaker for everyone to hear. And I walked in there just in time to hear it. And he was the one that said that, that the word saint is hagios. Hagios means feast. And nobody said anything. And I was making my way to my seat. And I heard that. And I just made an exclamation. And everybody turned around and looked at me. And I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, don't you guys get it? This He's is incredible what he just said. It's incredible. Uh, anyway, um, now to go on in Revelation 7, 9, talking about that great multitude, those people, it's, it says that they had, now in the translation that we read in the English, it says they had their palm branches in their hands. No, that's not what it says. They had a record of their deeds in their hands. They were not palm branches. If you look at that word palm, it happens to be a Phoenician word. It's not even a Greek word. That Phoenician word is ba baal axion, which is obviously the word baal, right? Uh, which translates to palm branch. And that is a pagan representation because it's an evergreen. It's a, it's a pagan representation uh, of the sun god to the, to the, um, Palestinians to the to the pagans to the Phoenicians uh, and so that was an inserted word there it's a Phoenician word uh, so if you look at what we're supposed to be bringing when you come into the tabernacle certainly if it's a prior to a Passover time you're supposed to be bringing your first fruits and your spotless lamb so I believe that the people are bringing their fruits a record of their deeds if you will prior to coming in to the worshiping before the Father and Son with all the hosts of heaven. So anyway, that's, you can you know, evaluate that on your own. I'm just giving you that little <clears throat> piece of knowledge to get a little better concept of what uh, could possibly be going on there. Um, and then I have just one other thing here. Um, and I was just kind of bettering this out just yesterday. Uh, let's see, this is Revelation 13, 13 through 17. <clears throat> and, uh, and maybe this is something we could uh, expound upon next week. But, um, but I'll just kind of uh, give you a little bit of uh, thought that I have because I'm not totally sure on what I'm about to share with you, but it's just a thought. Uh, in Revelation 13, 13, it starts to say, it says, and he does great wonders. So that he makes fire, talking about this um, uh, imposter, right? The, mm -hmm. I, I think it's not the dragon. I, I forgot the context. But, but anyway, it's the, the, the working of the adversary. Makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Uh, now, you guys know that the oil BP platform that exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, there's been men that saw what really happened. Uh, that massive what looked like a massive lightning strike that hit that derrick. And by the way, for years prior to that accident, that derrick had the best record of all derricks on the entire seaboard of the entire United States, had the best record. And all of a sudden, this is the one that explodes? <clears throat> well, it turned out fishermen were out there that evening when that happened. Because uh, the guys go out there near the derricks to collect shrimp, I think it is, for the next day to use as bait. Basically, or they're, or they're getting bait fish, one or the other. Anyway, they're out there getting bait fish um, in the night <clears throat> with their little lighted she uh, ships. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they see this happen. There's been many, many people that have accounted for what they saw. 
and it was this massive, what looked like a lightning bolt. And we all know a lightning bolt is a flash of light, split second. But as they said, what we saw was this massive, thick lightning bolt that came down out of the sky that stayed there for upwards to 10 to 15 seconds before that thing blew up. Now, you guys remember, now I didn't get the dates on this, and I'm going to try and do this in the next week, but there was also a lightning strike that struck the top of St. Peter's Dome in the Vatican. You guys remember that? Yeah. I think it was just before, maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was just before Benedict stepped down. Um, and that allowed for Pope no, number 112 to step in. Do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say Pope number 112? Anybody? What What is it again? Pope number 112. Are uh, you talking about Peter? The last no, no, Peter? no. I'm talking about I'm talking about the Malachi, the Catholic, yeah, Malachi, yeah. The, the Catholic Malachi prophecy. Yeah, they says that the last one will be a Peter that brings peace, and we are up to that last one right now. Okay, yeah. So, so this is a prophecy that came out in the 12th century um, by a very young bishop who was supposed to come forward. He was asked to have visitation with the Pope. I guess he had stellar reputation. Um, he was the youngest bishop. Uh, he was actually uh, uh, coronated as a bishop before the age of 30. He had to be at least 30 back then. Anyway, the guy was like an angel, right? Uh, and anyway, so the Pope asked for his presence. Well, on his way in his carriage ride to Rome, <clears throat> he had a vision. And this, and I think his name was Malachi. Anyway, it was called the Malachi Prophecy. He had a vision of 112 popes, and the last one will give the keys to the Messiah, which we believe is the anti-Messiah. Okay, so if you follow the popes from that prophecy onward, from the late 1100s, when that was given, I can't remember the exact date, uh, but you can look it up, Malachi Prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, Pope Francis the first is number 112. Yeah. So he is the last Pope in that prophecy. So he theoretically, according to that prophecy would be the ones that would be handing the key to, like you said, to either Peter or to what we believe could very well be the anti Messiah. So, um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to try and flesh that out a little bit. I'm sharing this with you guys. You can do a little bit of study on that. I'd like to get a little more input if you guys have any in, any more insight into some of that. Now, if I go on in that uh, passage here back in Revelation 13, talking about this adversarial advocate, uh, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, not to the beast, to the image of the beast. What's the image of the beast? And I, I couldn't help but think of Faust, uh, Faustian gates, Fauci, Faustian gates. And it, but but that's just it just kind of came into my mind. I could be totally wrong. I, I need to think about it. So I pray about it some more. That the image of the beast should both speak, i.e., legislate, and cause, i.e., enforcement thereof. That as many as would not worship the image of the beast should not have any participation in the economy whatsoever. And he causes both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, that word foreheads is metopon. Now, you could speak on this, uh, Jackson. Metopon is the Greek word there that's interpreted forehead, uh, Greek number 3359. <clears throat> I did a, a reanalysis of that word. It could also mean amid or against the face. Now, the reason why I did that is because I got to thinking, and... and um, and again, this is just a thought, and again, I could be totally wrong, but I couldn't help but think this, but a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, I think of a smartphone. How do you hold a smartphone? Yeah. You hold it in your right hand, and where do you put it? You, now, you put it to your, you don't put it to your forehead, but you put it to your ear. Well, that, that word metapon, which is translated foreheads, can also mean amid or against the face. And I thought, I wonder if the smartphones with different apps could be used in order for you to be able to buy or sell 
you're going to need a particular app that says you have gotten the vaccine in order for you to buy any, in order for you to be out there in the public. I don't know. I'm just thinking about this stuff. Um, <clears throat> so and so, if you have your smartphone, you can flash it over uh, a, a register to you know ver verify that you have you know that that you're an inductee, right? Because if we continue reading on in that uh, chapter, uh, it says and that no man might buy or sell, save that he has this verification symbol or i.e. the name of the beast, be it a company, be it the name of a government agency, whatever it is, because it happens to be the number of a man and his number is 666. So <clears throat> anyway, um, uh, you know, I'm, try I'm trying to update. Is it uh, Kissinger or Ronald Reagan? Prince Charles? Who do you think that man is if we were to take this out of context and apply it to today? Well, you know, I've heard been so many predictions on that. Yes, I've, I've heard of the Prince Charles thing. That That's very interesting. I think it was Monty Judah. I don't know if you heard the same, but yeah, Monty Judah talked about St. Char uh, Charles. Yeah, far from it. Prince Charles. There was an obscure book that went around uh, 25 years ago with an, uh, it was anonymous. It somehow got every place. So a little booklet that named Prince Charles when he ascends to the throne of England, if he ever does, that because of his opinions and views and because his name can uh, yes. forms in some way right. to right. that thing that uh, he is probably the the future uh, mm -hmm. six six the future. right so you know about his coat of arms you can you can pull you can pull the six 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 out of his coat of arms too yeah i guess so <clears throat> yeah so there's so many things that are starting to come in place you know from pope francis handing the keys to whoever Mm -hmm. uh, to St. Charles, uh, why am I saying that? <laughs> you know, to Charles like the, taking the, the James Bible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think maybe he might hold, uh, turn the keys over to maybe the Mufti. Ah, uh, yes, that's interesting. Oh you know, in light of those three flags that I shared last Sunday, you know, there maybe there's a connection to that. Um, but oh, by the way, I, I appreciate your input on those the division of Jerusalem just prior to its destruction. Those three parts of Jerusalem. Oh, I've gone uh, over that and over that, and it, you helped me to go back again and make sure that I was talking right and find those maps. Yeah, he's talking about Jerusalem, an earthquake, and then breaking into three parts, which it, it certainly did there, right. Um, right before 70 AD. With the yeah, that's cool. They, they, they split the town, they split the city into three different sections with um, a snake being the head of each faction. Really? Yeah, all those guys, they were horrible people. John and Giscala, Eliezer, and who's the other one? Simon, son of Levi. Oh, wow. Because, you know, a snake is also rep representative of a six. So if you got three snakes, that's six, yeah. six, six right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Yes. But they were all prophetic types, too. You know, we get the idea of these three frogs. That was always one identity that I have not been able to figure out. Uh -huh. Nobody else has. But I, I think maybe you put that together. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see what, what comes out of that. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. We're going to get back together next Sunday, and Jesse and Mark will be here. And let's see. And Bishop Ragash and, and Governor had to go to a service here today. Oh, okay. So look at Norman. I knew he would pop in here. Yeah, I saw Norman there. Hey, Norman. Good for you, Norman. I'll show you my mask. Let me show it to you. <laughs> Hold on a second. It's right down here. You've got a very unique one, and here's mine. <laughs> okay, you guys, thank you. Yahweh be with you on the Shabbat. Go take a nap. Okay. Blessings. Bye bye. Bye bye.